Hey YouTube, today I'm actually going to be doing the dry ice test with the computer system for the weather balloon project. I'm out in the garage, I've got an old deep freezer, I've got everything hooked up and running. Let's take a look at it. So everything's in this little storage bin here. I'll get the antennas out of there and outside of the freezer, but here's the old rusty deep freeze. We've got the computer set up over here running the radio software. So everything should be good to go. I'm going to put it in the freezer and arrange the dry ice around that and see how cold we can get it. All right, here it all is. We've got it surrounded with almost 20 pounds of dry ice. We're ready to go. I think I'm going to leave it in there for about an hour and we'll check back on it. All right, so I'm about halfway through the test here. We're at 30 minutes and the temperature in the freezer is at just below 15 degrees Celsius. Everything seems to be going well. The radio transmitter is powered by the Pi. I'm still getting radio transmission, so the Pi is doing well. I do want to talk a little bit about why I'm doing this and what I hope to accomplish. Um, if, you haven't, if you haven't been paying attention, I'm building a high altitude weather balloon. It's going to be powered by a Raspberry Pi and two Adrenals with a ton of sensors hooked up to it. And it's going to go about 25 miles up in the air. Now, at that altitude, it does get very cold. So dry ice is going to provide a good um, environment for testing the hardware to see if it can withstand cold temperatures. It is all going to be enclosed in a styrofoam box. So this is really just a worst case scenario to see what would happen if temperature leaked into the box and it did actually get that cold. Now, some of my main objectives with this is to test the temperature and then also um, the cooling capacity. The Raspberry Pi is cooled by air and atmospheric air can, um, carries heat away pr fairly well. Um, the dry ice is subliming and producing carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide actually has a lower um, thermal capacity than atmospheric air. So I am actually concerned about it overheating, even though it's negative 16 degrees in there right now. The third thing that I want to accomplish is the speed of sound experiment. Um, the ultrasonic rangefinder doesn't work very well at cold temperatures, so I just want to see what happens when it actually gets that cold. I don't think that's going to happen when it's in the air, but it is something I want to test with it. And the speed of sound is also going to travel at a different speed through carbon dioxide, so that'll be cool to see as well. I think that's all I've got for right now. Um, I will check back when this is done and we'll go through the stats. Alright guys, everything seemed to work very well for this experiment. We got a ton of data here, reached a total temperature of negative 30 Celsius in the freezer. Um, the actual external temperature ended up being 20 degrees Fahrenheit as measured by the external temperature sensor. We got some air pressure data. Um, this one over here is the temperature from the sense hat. That one's measured in Celsius. The CPU temperature worked very well. For the speed of sound, I don't know why Excel isn't showing it, but it is up here. You can see that that was a complete failure. So I'll need to make sure to insulate the box very well so that that performs accordingly. Speed of sound in carbon dioxide should have been somewhere around 200 meters per second. And this is very sporadic. So that needs some attention. CPU temperature. We can see that it did not overheat. Temperature remains steady pretty much around 27, 26 degrees Celsius, I believe, for that one. So everything worked very well. I'll need to construct the payload package, make sure it's insulated. The 4K camera recorded a full hour of video, so that's good to go. And I didn't lose any data packets from the radio. GPS worked well, so I'm excited. Make sure you subscribe. Next week I will be covering some balloon flight planning information, so make sure you check that out next week, and I'll talk to you then. Thanks.